Hello and welcome back to Hemophyte Breakdowns. Today is a special day because I get to talk about armor. Uh, I fought in my first ever armor tournament last weekend and it was a lot of fun. Uh, and now I get to review my footage and talk about some of the techniques that were used in it. Um, just as a quick couple disclaimers. First, this is not my helmet and these are not my gloves. Uh, I had to borrow them because mine had not come in the mail yet. And so if you're wondering why a very typical looking Milanese outfit was paired with whatever this is, uh, that's why. It was not my choice. But um, another precursor is that despite the fact that you cannot see it here, there is perf plate over my face. And the idea here is that uh, a lot of the manuals tell you that you should not be fighting on foot with your visor down because you will suffocate and probably fall over. So you're supposed to fight with your visor up, a.k.a. you'd rather get stabbed in the face and die than slowly suffocate, fall over, and then die. So uh, we put perf plate in front of where that opening would be so that we can still have our tournament. We can still hit each other in the face and be safe, but, you know, have better visibility, better breath breathability, and uh, not have to suffer like my opponent was by being locked in a, a steel coffin, so to speak. The other thing to point out here is that as a result of this, uh, my opponent starts with two hands on the sword um, in a very typical, you know, maybe Blasfectum type position. This is because I believe his first plan was to come in and just real quick hit me right in the face. This would count for him since my perf plate is supposed to be, you know, representative of nothing being there. Also, also to point out is the rule set that we were fighting under. Um, under normal Harness Vectin rules, you land your one good hit to an unarmored area and you're done. Uh, we were experimenting a little bit here where what we wanted to do was it was a continuous fight to three points or to a ring out or a fall or something else. So the general idea is that if I or someone else were to land a good strike or a good stab into an unarmored area, they could pull it back out, put it back in three times, they win. But if they put it in once and then it gets pushed out of the way and you change to a different position, well, now you have to land a new technique. And what I think this helps emphasize is the grappling and uh, positional part of Harness Vectum. But enough talking about the rules. Let's watch the exchange. There you go. So... Uh, something goes wrong a little bit after this, so I'm not going to show the rest of this clip exactly. But that's the exchange that I want to focus on. So if we go back and we watch it a little bit slower, which I can do now, what we're going to see is my opponent does do what I thought they were going to do. And uh, the second I see my opponent come forward with both hands on their sword like this, I switch. I switch because what I want to do is I want to throw out these tippy-tappy little things here because I believe that Throwing out some paltry, not going to do anything shots will help keep me safe from this shot, which just came within inches of actually landing. Because I had both hands on my sword, I could fence in a way I'm you know, slightly more familiar with and protect my face a little bit better until we get to this point where we get to the mid-range. So now that we're here, I let go with my left hand and I grab my opponent's sword. He still has two hands on his sword, which means I have a really good leverage point here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my opponent's arms to their left for two reasons. One, I'm taking the sword a little bit out of the equation. And I'm helping prevent my opponent from switching to half sword because they'd have to take their hand that I am now pushing off and then put it back on, you know, halfway up the sword. But I'm also exposing this, uh, my opponent's left armpit here. So uh, if you don't necessarily know... Uh, when you're in armor, there are only a couple of unarmored points, and one of the big ones is the armpit. The problem is, is that when your arms are at your sides, the armpit is basically not available as a target. So you have to do some things to get it to open up. One is to get your opponent to lift their arms up, and the other is to get your opponent to push one arm to one side. If you want to imagine that, that meat between your pec and your shoulder, uh, the further out your arm goes towards one side... Uh, the side of your arm. So if you take your right arm and throw it all the way out to your right side, you see that gap between where your pauldron would be and your chest piece would be widened significantly. So by pushing my opponent's arm off to the side, I not only open up the underside of the armpit, but I also open up the front side. So the second that happens, 
I take my sword, my that is now in one hand, and I shove it right into that gap, right between their pauldron and their uh, uh, their cuirass, and I get that nice stab right in there. Now, again, under normal harness effect and rules, this would pretty much be the end of the exchange, because it's not. What I think it's very important to point out is that under normal circumstances, if this were a theoretical real fight, what I'd basically be trying to do now is shove that point deeper and deeper into my opponent, because the sharpened long sword point would pretty easily be able to go through the padded gambus in here. But what happens is my opponent instead pommels me in the head really hard. And what that does is it makes my sword immediately come out of that gap. And because we've changed positions now, his arm is back down to his side and my target is no longer available. I thought this was a really fun little exchange because you got to see, I think, the two key indicators of, of longsword uh, armored combat, which is that you, you have to ride the line between precision and brutality. On the one hand, anything you do to your opponent can unbalance them, push them around, get them into positions where they're vulnerable. But at the same time, that tiny little point and that short little sword can find its way into a bunch of little gaps. So you have to always ride the line between putting it all on the line and just trying to push your opponent somewhere and getting your sword in that gap or having your hands down and just getting beaten in the face. All right, that's going to be it for today. I look, uh, Hopefully everyone looks forward to uh, seeing more Armored Combat videos. Uh, but if you'd like to see your own footage featured on the channel, you can send me an email at hemophytebreakdowns at gmail.com. And I hope to see you back next time.